Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. Um, Evil Mike, and this is going to be another review. Um, this episode is actually sponsored by Miss So. Um, she gave me this whole entire run, and I'm going to review it uh, in time, but um, little by little. But I was kind of at a at a high cliff because I started at Volume Two, Issue One, and I kind of wanted to go back to the beginning. So I'm starting at the beginning. So ha! All right, so we got Issue One. Volume 1, Amiston. Um, of course, she has a first appearance before then, but this is basically her origin story right now. I don't, I've never read um, that Legion of Superheroes. I think it's 288 or something like that. So I don't know if it's just like, bam, there's uh, Amista, and that's all that is in that comic. Um, but this is pretty much the origin story right here of who Amy is and how she turns into Amista. So let's get into it. Um, this show, like, she's kind of like uh, talking to the reader and just explaining, like, you know, hey, I'm Amista, let me tell you my story, you know, kind of thing. Um, they show you that it's her, I'm trying to remember what, what age she is. She is young. I want to say it's her, because it's her birthday. I want to say it's like her 8th birthday or ninth birthday or something like that. She is a lot younger than she was in Volume 2. Um, you can see her right there, the blonde little girl. Um, in the background, uh, we see that some kind of creature has come from Jim World through a portal, um, being tied to Amista because Amista, even though she doesn't know it, she still is wielding a certain amount of power, like uh, magic-wise. Um, the creature comes and it happens to be on her birthday and and he's got like he he actually stole something and he stole it from like uh, Castle Amista I think and and basically he was trying to get away and somehow you know went through this portal and, and ended up in Amy's real home and it got mixed in with the present she ends up opening it up and as soon as she does this this other guy portals in uh, like another he's like an ogre or something like that but he is working for uh, Sardonax, I think is his name, one of her main villains. Um, but he basically captures her after she opens up the present and grabs the gem. And he basically grabs her and takes her through the portal with that gem. As she goes through the portal, um, time works a lot different from Earth to Gem World. So she automatically like turns into this 21-year-old you know, Amista. It is explained because like Earth's time moves a lot faster than Gym World does. So technically she's been on Earth for 20 years of Gym World's life. So when she goes back to Gym World, she goes 21. And when she goes back to Earth, she's like eight or nine. Now she might be like 10 or 12. I'm not sure on her age. I was looking for it, but um, so anyways, um, after getting through the portal, she pops in in a throne room and is greeted by um, <clears throat> Sardonax. Um, this is basically one of um, the main antagonist, uh, like henchmen. He is like a main bad guy himself, but I kind of I want to say he's like a, a second, you know, compared to the main guy. The main bad guy shown on the front cover with all the blue um, hypno stuff. That would be uh, Dark Lord Opal, I think is his name. Um, and basically she gets here and it's Sardonax or it might be like Castle Opal or something like that but um, she is taken here and when she is taken here by the ogres she greets uh, Sardonax meets him real quick now of course Amy doesn't know what's really going on she doesn't know why she has turned into Amista she doesn't know why they want her um, but they do have some ogres that grab her she is able to use the power and the ogres kind of laugh saying that um saying that you know that she doesn't really know how to wield the power so it's kind of like like sparklers at the moment it does frighten them at the you know they they think it's going to be like a real amistad blast but then it does hit them and nothing really happens um and that's kind of where the comic gets a little more graphic because at this time uh, the two ogres were actually going to rape um poor little amistad and um of course, she's not the young version here, but still, you know, I mean, this is like literally like a little girl going through this. Um, but luckily, um, there, 
you know, someone comes out of nowhere and instantly kills uh, both of the the ogres, which I thought was really cool because they actually show like blood right here on the axe from, and, and both of them, I mean, even though the axe is there, that there's just their blood dripping on the axe. He killed the, both of them with his bare hands. Um, we, fi we find out that it is, um, and I think his name is Granch, like Branch, but Grant with a G. And we find out that he is a one of um, Princess Amista's loyal servants that works for Amista, you know, the, the king and queen and, and the court, and he has come to rescue her somehow, um, you know, he found out that she is here. So without much exp explanation, he kind of grabs her, tells her to hold on, and they, they kind of fly off and stuff. They, they don't go too far, and they run into the next major character, and this is who sent Granch. This is um, Centrina, I think her name is, and she is like a witch that works with Amista and her family. She's kind of like, I want to say, like fairy godmother to Amista, she, or, or you could just say grandmother. Um, but very quickly, they do meet each other, and we found out that, that Sardonax did find out about the guards being killed, and he has already sent... Um, stuff to pursue them which we see Granch take care of right here these things called hellhounds um, Granch kind of mentions that if Sardan Sardonax shows up that they wouldn't be able to fight him in their current state so he makes sure that Shatrina and Amista kind of leave and, and Granch takes care <clears throat> he takes care of the like hellhounds that show up they do show because I was kind of surprised, surprised but they do show that Shatrina like flies off so she's I mean because I already knew she was a witch and had powers and stuff like that but I thought it was kind of cool that she could fly too so she flies off and they do make it to Castle Amista um, where Sintra promises you know the, um, Amista that she's gonna explain everything that's gonna go on um, they kind of feel like they have a lot of time uh, you know uh, Sintra or uh, now I think I might be messing her name up now Sintrina it's Citrina, I'm sorry, Citra. <laughs> Citrina. They think they have more time and stuff, and it's funny when Amista gets here, she instantly feels at home because, of course, she has been here before. This is where she was born, and, like, real quickly, she kind of gets a rough, like, because she is pampered real quickly. She's showered, and then she's uh, given the royal headdress and the, and, you know, the princess's garbs, and, um... Basically, she is kind. Of, she kind of gets a rough, you know, uh, breakdown of what happened during the past. Basically, saying that that her mom and dad were these great king and queens, and they they you know ruled a very just and um, you know good kingdom. There was a lot of peace, and then of course the main bad guy shows up, and this is kind of where we get our first appearance of uh, Dark Opal right here, and we get his face down here. I love the way he looks. He's like blue and he's got these black lines all in him. He looks pretty cool. Um, but we found out, of course, that Dark Opal killed uh, her parents and that led to Citrina, you know, uh, sending uh, Princess Amistad through the portal to protect her, you know, on Earth to keep her away from Dark Opal. Um, while this is going on during the explanation, like some guards run in, they quit. They, they're told that their time has run out. The Dark Opal and uh, Sardonax are already at uh, you know Castle Amista, and they are they are attacking with full force. They brought like their main army, <clears throat> and they do show that eventually, like Citrina and Amista, you know, make it to this top of this tower while all you know the army is around and. Um, Citrina tells them that they have the power to make like a barrier around uh, Castle Amista and neither the Opal or um, Sardonax won't be able to penetrate the magic barrier. Citrina tells her that she just uh, at the moment she doesn't have enough power because she does try herself and it's kind of this whole thing where she's trying to push uh, Amista into using you know her magical power because she should be the stronger magic wielder because I think royalty has a like a, a you know if you royal blood you have a stronger uh, magical ability or something like that we do see that Sardonax is quickly like you know breaks the uh, Citrina's barrier and they, they start making it through and stuff Branch is kind of uh, on the ground tackling a lot of the team they do at this moment kind of explain the time frame because we see here that the parents are kind of uh, 
they heard like you know Amy scream as she was being uh, stolen away by the ogre in the beginning and we we really see that it's only been seconds since she has um, left the house like and it's already been like maybe a week since Amos has been in uh, gym world um, <clears throat> eventually after Satrina kind of pumps her up and tell you know because it's not really like she doesn't believe she's this it's more like she's trying to take everything in it's I mean it's literally in like fast burst that Amy is getting all this information so it's not really like she didn't really believe it's just so much information that's coming out of her so eventually she does start listening to Satrina and eventually she does do this like mega magic blast that like it kind of incinerates most of Sardonax um, <clears throat> army in the show at the bottom like and the ones that that were able to survive they, they show them limping away so it didn't affect Sardonax at all just because he's a stronger power wielder and Amistad is not at, at, at you know the level that she should be so they do show here that he is still trying to attack even though his army has left it's more on the fact that he doesn't want to fail you know uh, Opal's wrath uh, Dark Lord Opal but um so they show, uh, you know, they do show him attacking Satrina and, and, and Satrina and just how badass of a magic user she is. She just kind of swipes away his, his magic spell. They go back into, uh, you know, Satrina really explains that, hey, we need to start teaching you. We have like a limited time before Dark Opal comes back. And Amy is like, no, you don't understand. I need, I need to go home. I need to find out what my parents are doing. They're probably like worried sick. Um, Satrina does go back more into the, like, you know, there hasn't been that much time type of thing. And um, we do catch up with, like, because the Dark Oval 4 was, um, like, flashback scene. So we do catch up. We do see him in his, his ca castle, and Sardonax is going back, you know, limped from being beat by Satrina and Amista, and basically tell him that, like, he lost a good proportion of uh, the army. Um, Dark Lord Opal is, is not, uh, you know, so happy with um, with Sardonax because this is technically the second time he has failed him because in the very beginning when he was supposed to kidnap, uh, you know, Amy and bring him to, you know, technically he already messed up that whole thing. Um, so Dark Lord Opal is not very happy. We do see that Amy at the very end does not take uh, Satrina's warnings about, like, training and this and that. and. So Amy does jump back to the portal, trying to get back to her, to her parents. And we see at the very bottom that, that Dark Lord Opal has sent another assassin, not really relying on Sardonax to complete uh, this evil deed. Um, this, this assassin is waiting in the, in like a, the portal tunnel is kind of what they said. And he's kind of like hiding out in the, uh, the tunnel. So we'll have to get to, uh, issue two to find out what happens to Amistad. Um, and I can't say I, it was a good read. I mean, the art is amazing. I was kind of happy it was a little more mature because it seems like volume two was kind of toned down a little bit. Um, it's not that I expected this to be a mature reader. It, it's kind of a girly comic and that, that's, that's the whole point, man. Uh, I love them. Evil Mike loves some strong ladies, I'll tell you that. Um, but. That's my review. I know it's not for everybody, but I am super into Amistad. I'm, you know, I, I still I can't thank Miss So uh, enough. Every time I do one of these, they, I'm going to mention that she is the sponsor. She gave me this whole collection. Um, but that's my review. I'm going to get back to some more reading, so you might get some more reviews today. We got new comic book day coming, and um, yeah, guys, I'll see you soon. Like, comment, subscribe. You know, let me know.